Good morning, y'all. Happy Saturday. Happy August 1st. It's a new month. The last 29 hours have been really, really bad. I've been experiencing a lot of what I believe are early labor symptoms. So yesterday I could not finish working. I just kind of just said forget it and laid in bed. It's really, really a lot of pressure and I was feeling what I thought were contractions. The nurse, I called the nurse, she said they're not contractions yet because I sounded too calm. But she said it was probably the baby moving down into like the canal, the birth canal. And she's been doing that for 29 hours. All last night I got no sleep because it started happening back to back to back to back to back. And it's still doing that. Ronnie went and got us some, um, yesterday he went and got Popeyes for dinner. And this morning he went and got IHOP for breakfast and this is my leftovers, so I'll save that for tomorrow. But you guys, oh my goodness, it's rough, like rough, rough, rough. But I'm sticking it out. Today is supposed to be his niece's birthday um, get together. And we did get her, there's our second Barbie Dream Camper because that's what she asked for as well. Um, but he may just take that and drop it off to her because she's been waiting on it. I think her birthday was like Tuesday or Wednesday or something. Um, I think it was Wednesday. So she's been waiting on it. So he may just drop, drop that off. I'm not sure that I'm going to make it over there. But, um, yeah. Your girl is struggling. It's a man down situation. Okay? So that's breakfast for tomorrow. If I'm here tomorrow, let me throw this out. I think Ronnie is about to go wash his car or something like that. I don't know what he's about to do. But, um, yeah, I ordered a birthing ball or exercise ball from Amazon. So it's supposed to get delivered tomorrow. Um, I just ordered it. I still need to put all the, oh, FedEx just left. They just dropped off something from the registry. I just got an alert. Um, I still need to put a lot of the stuff that my aunt dropped off for us. Um, I need to put that stuff away, but... Nothing is getting done right now because your girl is going through it. And I'm about to go back upstairs and lay down. I have water upstairs. So that's what's about to happen. Ronnie has already packed the car with our hospital bags and everything. Because like I said yesterday, I could have sworn I was going into labor and I was like, uh, let's go. But I called the nurse and she was like, basically hold off because... They weren't the real contractions. So I'm about to go back upstairs and lay down. And I will talk to you guys a little later. Bye. Sunday. Today is August 2nd and I'm laying in bed. As you can see yesterday, I went to the hospital because I was having very intense contractions and they were every three to five minutes apart. And that's when I figured you were supposed to go to the hospital. And when I went, I was very disappointed because they did a cervical check and I was not dilated at all but yet I was having very intense contractions they hooked me up to the monitors and they saw the contractions as well and they really couldn't tell me why my contractions were so intense and so frequent if I was just in early labor and I wasn't dilated at all so that was like really discouraging to me but they did give me some pain medication through the IV which was great like they gave me they ended up giving me two doses because I made them give me another dose right before I left or 20 minutes before I left and it kind of it definitely like knocked the edge off I didn't feel any pain I just felt a little bit of pressure with every contraction and that's how I knew a contraction was coming 
or happening and I can look on the screen to see it, um, you know, on the screen. But they, she, the nurse kind of got my hopes up because um, we had already packed up the car and everything and I, I just knew it was showtime. Like I knew I had dilated, I knew because I was going through pain since 4.30 a.m. on Friday. So, but it just wasn't as frequent and they weren't as intense. Yesterday it got really intense. And like I said, they were three to five minutes apart. Um, so the nurse was like, oh, well, with every contraction, your baby's heart rate is doing something funky. It's dropping off the monitor and then it'll come back or drop really low um, and come back. And so we just want to, you know, give you some fluids to see if that helps. And we'll, you know, take it from there. But, you know, if it doesn't, we'll likely keep you, but we'll likely keep you anyway because you're full term. You're over 39 weeks. So hearing that, one, scared me because I'm like, my baby's heart rate is dropping. Like, okay. And two, you're going to keep me. So that means she's she's coming. Like, this is, this is it. So of course I tell everyone and, you know, I'm keeping people up to date and everything. But then when the doctor comes in, you know, I finished one IV bag. They said, oh, your baby really liked the um, fluids. I think you were a little dehydrated and... You know blah 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 so they gave me another bag and then of course the doctor came in and like blew my whole world and was like oh well if it wasn't for covid we could admit you and have you like walk around the facility and just try different things to kind of like get labor going more because you know like she said i'm not dilated but i mean really home is the best place for you blah 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 and i'm looking at her like lady I came here because I could not handle being at home with these intense contractions that you see that were every three to five minutes. So what are you talking about? So she was just like, you know, just try to, you'll be in the comfort of your own home and you can eat, you can walk around, you can, you know, change positions, you can do all that stuff. But here you're confined to the bed. I'm like, okay, but with contractions coming every three to five minutes, it's not like I'm about to be running a marathon at home either because it's every three to five minutes and they are really intense so she was just like you know come back once they you know get intense and they're between you know they're like five minutes apart I was like okay well my problem is that's what I did this time and you told me I wasn't dilated and she was like yeah I saw that like yours were every three to five minutes you had some really strong ones you know everybody's pain is different blah 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 so she ended up sending me home at like, it was like nine something, I think we left. And I was high off meds. Whatever that medicine they gave me, Stadol, Satterall, whatever it was. They said it's what they give people who are in early labor before it's time for an epidural. That stuff is some liquid gold. They put it in your IV. Uh, first of all, it makes you drowsy as hell. So I was like loopy and drowsy and sleepy. And it definitely takes the pain away. Like, oh my goodness. If the epidural is better than that, sign buttons up. So anyway, we went to McDonald's on the way home because I hadn't eaten anything since like 11 o'clock that morning. And you know, you can't eat when you're in the hospital and labor and delivery and stuff. So, um, Ronnie took a little bit of footage of me, I think, um, while I was in triage. Because I never left the triage areas because they discharged me. Um, but, um, so we went to McDonald's, I got something cause I wanted some french fries and then all last night, like every 10 minutes I was having contractions. So I, ne I didn't sleep. I haven't slept in two days. Like this is for the birds. I am mentally being challenged. I'm drained. I had no idea that labor and not even true labor. Cause they kept saying I'm not in true labor. I'm in like early labor or whatever could last three days and it I mean this is crazy like I don't know anyone personally who has labored for three days and dealt with contractions that are this frequent and this strong and I was getting frustrated because a lot of people were saying oh it's probably just Braxton Hicks these were not Braxton Hicks contractions when they hooked me up to that monitor they saw these are real contractions like real ones and they was three to five minutes apart and I wasn't even my my I wasn't even dilated at all, like none. So very frustrating. 
I'm trying to stay encouraged. I'm trying to stay positive. Hold on, y'all. What's coming now? Yes. Ronnie. Um, I was having a contraction. He got weight. Another thing I was doing wrong, apparently they saw me in the middle of a contraction yesterday. And I was holding my breath through it. And they told me that that was affecting the baby's heart rate too. Like I have to breathe through the contraction. Which is easier said than done when that pain hits you. But anyway, like, sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it's that's easier said than done. Like, breathing, hold on, y'all. Let me hold the phone. Um, breathing through the contraction instead of holding my breath. I, I guess it's just a natural reaction for me to hold my breath through it. But they were saying breathe through it and give the baby oxygen. So I've been trying to remember to do that, but y'all, this is crazy. I've never known anybody to be in labor this long, whether it's active labor, early labor. My contractions are real intense contractions that are coming frequently. Now they're coming about every eight to 10 minutes or so, but yesterday they was, they was coming. Um, and that's just crazy because I wasn't that like and this is day three like what so they said the process takes a little bit long well not a little bit the process takes longer for first-time moms but I still feel like this is very very extreme I'm not opposed to a c-section at all at this point I just want her here and I want her healthy and I want to be healthy but going through this for a few more days a couple more days like this ain't gonna work. I've never known anybody to, even with their first kid, to be experiencing contractions like this for this long. Like, Braxton Hicks are not supposed to hurt. It's just supposed to be a slight tightening. A lot of times you don't even notice it. These are gut-wrenching, stop you in your tracks contractions. And we're on day three. So I finally told my job I'm done. I'm on leave now. So I'll call the insurance company tomorrow and let them know, like, start my leave on the 3rd instead of the 5th or whatever. Because y'all know my, my original due date was the 5th. And I think also that's why the doctor really didn't want to do anything yesterday, even though I was full term. She tried to say that she couldn't, she couldn't induce me because I wasn't dilated, which doesn't make any sense because people go in for induction and they're not dilated. They have to give you like a pill to try to get you to dilate and then they can give you Pitocin or something because the other doctor that I went to on Thursday was telling me the process. So, and he was like, you know, if the pill doesn't work the first time, like we have to keep trying, we try it multiple times or something like that. So I know that you can induce someone who is not dilated, but she didn't also, she, obviously she didn't want to go that route. Um, and especially because I guess it wasn't my due date, even though I'm full term. Um, and then she just kept on saying, oh, it's less risk of C-section, which to me, the way I was feeling yesterday, I was like, listen, C-section ain't sound so bad, honey. Um, but we'll see where this journey takes me. I just wanted to vlog and give you guys an update. By the time you see this, hopefully baby girl will be here. We'll see. I may upload a vlog for you guys today to try to take my mind off some things. That's another thing. She was like, oh, try to distract yourself. It ain't no distracting yourself. When these contractions hit, you stopping what you're doing. Whatever contraction, whatever distraction you got going on is not going to work because this crap hurts. So, I just sent Ronnie to Wawa to get me a sandwich for lunch and some chips and a drink. 
so hopefully he'll get himself something too. Um, and yeah, well, we were supposed to be having dinner at my parents' house because my brother's family is coming over, but I don't know because I don't want to be around people and having contractions every 10 minutes. Like, I feel like that's going to get old really fast, and sometimes they're so intense that I'm like pretty loud trying to cope with them, so I don't want to be around a lot of people when I'm trying to deal with that and trying to like mentally you know go through that so anywho I will talk to you guys later I just wanted to give you guys an update that buttons is hanging in there and that baby Reagan is not born she's still baking and she's wreaking havoc inside of me right now so until the next update, guys, I will talk to you guys later. Bye. Y'all, I'm still suffering through these contractions every 7 to 10 minutes now. But I wanted to show you, I got a special delivery, and it's from some of my co-workers. It says, Antoinette, congratulations to you and Ronnie on your new bundle of joy. We wish you all the best for parenthood. Love Josh, Leslie, Asia, Kate, Jamila, Amy, Brittany, Robert, and Lakeisha. And look, they sent me a Vermont teddy bear. And it's engraved with Reagan's name. And it's posable, so like you can move the legs. It's really soft. It has a it's a girl bow tie on it. So thank you so much, team members. I really appreciate it. I've never heard of the Vermont Teddy Bear Company, but this is gonna go in her crib for a while. And then Amazon also came and Ronnie inflated my birthing slash exercise ball, which was supposed to be bigger than this. But hell, I'm about to use it because I'm suffering. He's outside about to wash his car because he just woke up. It is 8.13. After I use this for a bit, I might go walk around outside for a while while he's outside washing his car. And I'm trying to decide if I'm going back to the hospital tonight or in the morning because, dog, this is crazy. Oh, whoa, this is too low. I think this is too low. Let me turn it around so y'all can see. I got on my hair scarf because I was laying down upstairs. But I took a warm bath for probably about two hours. Uh, and that actually did help with some of the intensity of the contractions. But I couldn't stay in there forever, obviously. Um, but it did help. And then what else did I do? I did some squats, probably like 30 squats or so. Oh, this ball is a disappointment. I ought to send it back. Because I'm on the floor basically sitting on this. Or maybe he didn't put enough air in it. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to bounce. I don't know if you guys can see. But I'm pra practically on the floor as you can see. And I'm just bouncing on it. But I don't know that this is going to do anything. But I'm either going back tonight or tomorrow. We'll see. Um, and if they say I'm not dilated again, it's about to be curtains. Like, they're going to have to give me that pill to ripen some stuff and dilate some stuff and get on with this induction. Or they're going to have to give me a C-section because this every seven minutes for going on four days ain't working out. Like, these pains are too intense. And they're every seven minutes for four days like I understand this is for my first child but maybe my body just is tripping or maybe it just ain't catching on quick enough but we're going on four days with no sleep I'm tired and it hurts so I'm over it but anywho I'm drinking my water since they told me I was dehydrated yesterday I've been drinking my water and I watched a couple YouTube videos and they said that dehydration can cause um, more contractions so I've been trying to drink more water and just drink more fluids and stuff today as well but yeah all right i'm just gonna be here bouncing for a while i'm gonna talk to y'all later you guys it's the next day well actually day august 3rd now it's 2 10 in the morning and i came in again today because my pain 
and my contractions were five minutes apart. Hold on. There's something on my mouth. Um, my contractions were five minutes apart. I was having a lot of pain. I came in, they checked me, I was one centimeter, and they gave me some pain meds through a shot, and they were sending me home. And she said, let me check you one more time before I send you home. They let me like let the meds kick in for 30 minutes, and I was three to four centimeters. So they just admitted me to labor and delivery, and I'm so, so grateful. I was praying to God that they did not send me home again, because having contractions every five to seven minutes for four days, you guys, I was losing my mind. Like seriously. So I'm in the labor and delivery suite. I'm gonna flip the camera around and show you guys. Ronnie went downstairs to get our bags so I can get out of this ugly um, hospital gown and get into my stuff and get a little bit more comfortable. He went to go get all our bags and stuff. Um, and she's gonna bring me some apple juice, she said. Um, but I do have my water here. Um, so yeah, this journey is just beginning, but I'm so happy that we are where we are today and hopefully we'll have a baby August 3rd and I'm just so ready to meet her and, and be done with this whole labor and delivery experience um, they are prepping my epi and that's Ronnie's phone they're prepping my epidural now but I have to finish this bag of um, IV fluids first and they told me that it takes like 15 20 minutes or something 15 minutes to do the epidural which i thought was way quicker so i'm a little intimidated by that but i'm gonna stick it out because i know i need it um and the contraction that i just had like after they checked my cervix the first one was really really painful the second one wasn't as bad but because that first one was so painful like i'm still really really sore so yeah then they said i have to get a catheter but by that time, hopefully I'll be numb, so I won't feel it. But I don't have a choice. I'm getting this epidural. Um, so they said it should last the whole labor and delivery, and we'll be good to go. Um, so I will keep you guys posted. I'm going to try to do a pan around of the room. I'm going to have Ronnie um, do a little bit of recording as well. And then he went, like I said, to get the stuff out the car, and in that stuff is the tripod. So we'll see. My family is asleep because it's 2.15 in the morning, the majority of them. Both my parents are asleep, so they just wake up to pictures of their grandchild, hopefully, because I've been texting. I don't want to call and wake them up, but yeah. So that's what's going on, guys. So August 3rd, 2020 at 2.15 a.m. Um, I just signed all my consent forms. I didn't get a chance to get a filling on my nails, so oh well. But yeah, it's happening. Like, we're having a baby. Stay tuned. Okay, so obviously I am in the bed. <laughs> and this is my IV machine. This is like where Ronnie is sitting. And then he has like a sofa over there. My purse is over there. There's the TV and the peanut ball. And then when you come over here, there's the um, baby station, a computer over there. And then there's monitors and stuff here like the nurses station and then up here are like the OR lights not the OR but you know they turn those lights on when it's time to start pushing I believe um so yeah this is hold on y'all contraction so Ronnie just came in with the bags that's mine down there and then he's taking off baby girls you didn't bring in her blanket thing oh it's in your car well, when you bring in her car seat, just bring in the blanket thing, too, just in case it's cold. Um, but I got to get some stuff out of there. A lot. My table over there. Hold on, y'all. We're about to get it together. <laughs> so we're using Clorox wipes to wipe down everything. I got my hand sanitizer. This is my tech bag. I got all of my, my charger and everything, my headphones and stuff. And then this is my bag where I'm going to put my hospital gown and stuff on and everything. My socks, my hospital socks. All of that stuff is in here. He's wiping down his chair. And I guess he'll wipe down that sofa to, if he's going to sleep on that later. But um, he's wiping down the um, remote. And this is my hospital gown. And I have some socks in here. There's some slippers in here too.
prank, y'all. So, I'm about to show y'all my setup real quick. Move this around. That's the baby moving that you hear. I got on my socks. Ronnie took some pictures. We just took some pictures. That's the snack bag over there and the Clorox wipes. My slippers are over there for tomorrow. I changed into my my own hospital gown so now I don't feel so icky. This is my tech bag that can go pretty much. I can leave this here for pictures. I leave this here. Y'all see my little mirror set up? Look. And I got my mask, my Carmex. This is my apple juice and this is my water and my bubble cup. That's makeup, but I just needed to get my wish cup out of there, so it's fine. You can leave it there though. Um, and then hand sanitizer. I've already Cloroxed this down. I can't have anything to eat, so he's enjoying the snacks for me. Um, and yeah, he's just chilling around. So this is what the room looks like. Um, that's like the baby station. I kind of showed you already. So yeah, we took some pictures together and then he took some pictures of me separately. And then that's um, his bag, the baby bag. That's my bag, my purse is over there. So yeah, oh, he wants to use the mirror. Hold on y'all. I got my epidural already. Yes, I did, judge your mama. Um, that experience was, it was okay. I felt some pressure, but um, it was okay. And yeah, how do you feel? So they said, so right now it's 3.30, like 7 in the morning, as you can see. And I'm not tired, probably because of the adrenaline. He said he's not sleepy. He's waiting for the coffee shop downstairs to open so he can get some coffee. But um, I was 3 to 4 centimeters when I got switched over to labor and delivery. So they said it takes the longest to get to 5 to 6. And then after that, it's probably an hour each centimeter. So we're probably looking like late morning, maybe. What you think? What's your guess? Uh, That's what I was gonna say. So we both think around 10 a.m. So, yeah, I'm excited to go through this process and get it over with, and to meet her, and to tell her about herself. Um, and yeah, and he's brushing his waves. So yeah. That's it. All our, our families are sleeping, basically. Well, your mom texted me back when I texted her that they were admitting me, but that was like an hour and a half ago, maybe. Yeah, she just What'd she say? Oh, so his mom is up, but my parents are asleep. I think my sister-in-law texted me in the family group chat, because that's what I texted. So I will hear from them first thing in the morning, and hopefully baby girl won't be here by then. I mean, if she is, it's cool, but um, if not, that's fine. Um, and yeah, so this is just the journey. I'm gonna turn the camera around so you guys can see my me in my hospital gown. And um, then we're gonna chill out. They told me to get some sleep because I haven't slept in two days because I've been having contractions every five to seven minutes for three days. Um, so that's the plan. Let me turn the camera around. I can trash it like once this is over it was like twenty dollars on amazon i just wanted my own gown because covid and everything i did have to put that other one on when i was in triage but i can pretty much do what i want now so i have on my socks and i have on um my own gown and then once baby girl is born we'll take some pictures in our matching swaddle and stuff like that and then ronnie has some shirts too that he's going to wear but for right now we're okay probably when i start pushing he'll put on whatever shirt I don't know um but these are my labor and delivery earrings I put them on a couple days ago because they're not hoops and I can sleep in them they're comfortable to sleep in so I knew I would just wear these the whole time and then yeah so I do have my hair scarf too I think it's in my purse um that I'll tie my hair down with before I go to sleep but I'm happy that I have braids so that's good so I'll keep you guys posted. I'm gonna enjoy this apple juice. We're gonna watch some HGTV and then I think he's gonna go get some coffee. So I'll talk to you guys later. Deuces. Hey y'all, so it is 1.07 and they just checked me. I'm vlogging. 
Um, they just checked me. I'm five centimeters now. So in three hours, three and a half hours, I went from four centimeters to five centimeters. So they just upped my Pitocin to 12. And then after that, I think they're going to push it up to 20. But I'm really, really hot for some reason. So my handheld fan from Dollar Tree has come in handy because it's cooling me off. Ronnie's over here eating. Um, he, he went and got some lunch from the cafeteria. All I can think about is what I'm going to eat after she's here because I'm so hungry. Um, and hopefully they'll let him leave to go get me something because at the looks of it, the cafeteria will be closed by the time she gets here. And usually, if that's the case, they only give you like pre-packaged sandwiches or something like that, which I despise soggy sandwiches. So, but yeah, we're just chilling, waiting around. Um, yeah, that's it. I talked to my family and everything, so we're good on that end. They finally let me. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to move my legs. They finally let me uh, take a break from the peanut ball because I had my leg like propped up or whatever. So yeah, I'm just chilling, waiting on Miss Reagan to make her grand appearance. My thing, y'all. This is so cute. I'm eight centimeters, so I'm going to lie to this person. So pretty soon, it's go time. And they've already prepped everything, so they make the table and the baby stuff. Well, they have to make that. Daddy's first feeding. She breastfed for about 20 minutes, but she didn't, I don't think she was getting much colostrum, so we opted to have um, some supplemental Similac, and as you can tell, she's downing it over there. So she's getting her first 20 milliliters. I think it's milliliters. I don't know. It is, yeah. And then tomorrow morning, she can have 30 to 35, she said and then up it to, you know, 40. But she said, always try to breastfeed first, and then, um, you know, you can add the formula in after. So she bought a couple more um, things of Similac right there. And then um, also she already had two bowel movements and one um, wet diaper. So the nurse said that was good. She must be getting a little bit of colostrum that we just don't know about. But my milk really hasn't come in yet, obviously, so.